This video is to be used for educational purposes only and is not intended to replace individual research or licensed investment advice. Unique experiences and past performance does not guarantee future results. Trading stocks, options, and spot currencies involves substantial risk and there's always the potential for loss. Your trading results may vary. No representations are being made that any software or training will guarantee profits or not result in losses from trading. This is the JDFN Market Wrap. This is the Market Wrap. It's Friday. I'm Jack Lott on the James Dix Financial Networks. President Bush said a broad-ranging U.S. plan to fight the crisis in the financial world will get the financial system moving again in the states. But in a statement from the White House, he said that plan will put significant amounts of taxpayer dollars right on the line. The president said that the Democrats and Republicans must come together to approve the plan. The Fed will extend loans to banks to finance their purchases of asset-backed commercial paper from money market mutual funds, a move that the Fed says will help funds meet investor demands. The Fed will also buy from primary dealers short-term debt issued by Fannie Mae, Freddie Mac, and the federal home loan banks. The Treasury Department today asked Congress to give it sweeping power to buy up toxic debt that it has uh, unhinged Wall Street. The President authorized Treasury to tap up to $50 billion from a Depression-era fund to ensure that the holdings of eligible money market mutual funds uh, remain intact. And the SEC took what it called emergency action and temporarily banned investor form uh, short-selling 799 financial companies. The ban aimed at helping restore falling stock prices that have shattered confidence in the financial markets take effect immediately. Japan, Australia, India, and Indonesia pumped over $42 billion into their money markets as cash remained hard to find despite the unprecedented move coordinated by the Federal Reserve in the U.S. to make an extra $180 billion dollars and uh, funds available to the banking system. Citigroup, by the way, is considering making a bid for Washington Mutual. J.P. Morgan Chase is also considering a purchase of that ailing institution. Economic reports next week. Look for August existing home sales, durable goods for August. The new home sales report also for August. Consumer reports, uh, consumer sentiment report, I should say, for September. And the second quarter GDP revision. In earnings news, Oracle earnings rose to $1.08 billion, or 21 cents a share. That from $840 million, or 16 cents a share a year ago. Good report for Oracle. Toshiba lowering its profit forecast lower, blaming the drop in semiconductor prices and weaker-than-expected demand, slipping into the red for the first uh, half for the first time in five years. And Dress Barn reported fiscal fourth quarter profit falling 9% to $22.1 million, or 34 cents a share. Analysts had expected 30 cents a share. Some of the earnings out next week include AutoZone, 3Com, CarMax, Lennar, HB Fuller, Nike, Bed Bath & Beyond, Red Hat, Vail Resorts, Rite Aid, Discover Financial, and uh, Neiman Markets, just to name a few. Third quarter earnings begins October 7th when Alcoa releases its quarterly numbers. Some of the stocks in the news today, let's look at the financials. Morgan Stanley considering a merger with a large commercial bank or raising capital from abroad as its uh, brokerage firm ties, uh, tries to battle concerns about its access to short-term funding. Genworth Financial saying it has roughly $900 million in cash and cash equivalents at its holding company. And State Street saying it was well capitalized, would remain so even if it should need to consolidate its affiliates it uses to raise short-term financing. And that is the Market Wrap on a Friday. Jack Lott here on the James Dix Financial Network.